a modern landscape of intraocular lenses or cataract lenses available for you in 2024. What you should know about four major types of intraocular lenses today? What is a toric intraocular lens uh, available for correction of astigmatism? When it should be used? And of course, a few words about the newly available in the United States light adjustable lens. Hi there. My name is Oleksi, a you at IWillAdvisor.com channel. Last week, I have been invited to give a lecture to a professional ophthalmic society in Ukraine to share my knowledge about different AVL types and AVL calculation and other professional stuff. And in this video, I'm going to share with you part of this lecture because it is uh, really easy and uh, useful and for professional audience and will be easily understandable and useful for you as a patient who are looking for um, eyewall selection for your particular visual needs and your particular case. So let's have a look to the short summary and short cut of this lecture. In the modern world, we have four basic eyewall types. It is monofocal, enhanced monofocal, extended range of vision and full range of vision lenses. No more other eyewall types available. The rest is simply marketing. And the basic difference is very simple. It is the amount of vision available to the patient at certain distances or number of distances without use of glasses. Let's start with a simple monofocal IOL. It provides only one focal point, only fixed distance, normally it is far vision. However, sometimes we could calculate it for a sharp near vision, but it's still only one focal distance. The next IOL type is enhanced monofocal lens. It provides improved intermediate vision, sufficient and necessary for intermediate tasks like shopping, doing something by hands, cooking, um, working in a garage, and moreover, works like working on a large screen computers. And it provides safer working. And on my opinion, having today availability of enhanced monofocal lenses, I don't see any reason to implant standard monofocal lens. I'd rather pay for enhanced monofocal lens out of the pocket to get this few extra lines of intermediate vision and improved near vision, which gives me significantly better visual quality and significantly better quality of life. It's so big an advantage versus monofocals that you can't believe how patients are happy with. The next type is extended range of vision lens. It provides intermediate vision, normally a bit better than enhanced monofocal, and it provides functional near vision. What does it mean? At near vision, you can easily use your smartphone, you can easily work with uh, notebooks like uh, with smaller computers uh, on a smaller distance, but you still cannot read well in, um, for a long time. Talking about smartphone use, I'm referring to a standard phone size. And it's important to emphasize that for many cases, you will still need reading glasses for comfortable and prolonged work at up close. And the fourth serial type is full range of vision lens type. These lenses are designed to provide you with a full region vision without use of glasses for long and comfortable reading, for intermediate work, for far vision, of course. But these lenses normally require more uh, precise calculation and more precise implantation. Four IOL types and light adjustable lens technology. What IOL type light adjustable lens belongs to? Write me in the comments below and I will tell you in my answer, are you right or wrong? And in my next video, I will do a deep review of light adjustable lens technology, why it is important, who is the best candidate probably, and should you go with LAL or maybe another IOL type. So subscribe and see you next video. So as you can see, everything seems to be relatively easy. We have only four IOL types and the difference is just amount of vision from your eyes to the arm lengths and amount of sharp vision where you don't need the glasses in that area. Despite it seems to be easy, a lot of surgeons and a lot of patients are struggle to select the proper eyewall types because it's not only a question of spectacle independence at certain distance. First of all, we have number of eyewall calculation criteria, number of types of eyewall and blending of different eyewall models or different eyewall types in different eyes. It's more than 10 types of implantations available. I'm planning to do a next video about this blended implantation as well. So if you're interested in these topics, please subscribe to my channel now, switch on the notification and please give me thumbs up to support my work here on YouTube. So let's move on and let's talk about astigmatism correction and toric IOLs. Toricity of an IOL or a toric component is a simple medical option needed to correct astigmatism, pre-existing astigmatism at, at patient's eyes. Historically, when the toric IOL has been invented, we had only monofocal lenses and then that's why we defined it as a separate class. And today, all of mentioned four major IOL types has either standard version 
or toric version to correct pre-existing corneal patient astigmatism. So patient can select the one of the four major oral types and should it be toric or not shall be uh, decided by the surgeon only. So to summarize and coming back to four oral types, these four oral types are divided in two major groups, a standard lenses and presbyopia correcting lenses designed to provide for a patient a certain level of spectacle freedom. So now you have a full picture. So still four types of IOLs and toric option in case you have astigmatism more than one diopter. As I said before, there is uh, no choice for you if you have astigmatism to select a toric IOL or not, unless you are ready to uh, be, a, let's say, either spectacle dependence to correct your astigmatism or you are okay with a poor quality of vision. We have two options to correct astigmatism of low diopters, about one, maximum 1.5 diopters. It is so-called limbal relaxant incisions or um, surgical technique to start the, your, your surgery from such an angle to fix your uh, pre-existing astigmatism if it's not of high amount. However, recent publications, recent studies shows that uh, the more reliable way to correct even low amount of astigmatism is use of toric IOLs. So my personal opinion, uh, if you have astigmatism, it's better to go with a toric IOL, despite it is more expensive and you will see in some cases you have to pay out of the pocket for additional let's say, option. But uh, as I said you before, it's investment worth it because you will have a stable and high quality vision for the rest of your life. Despite it seems to be easy to understand what type of IOL you want for your particular visual need for your particular case, what type of cataract lenses is needed for you to have a um, best visual quality, it's not an easy task because there is no perfect lens exists in the world and you have to balance between spectacle independence, quality of vision and different lighting conditions. And it's a lot of discussion here. To simplify this uh, process of eyewall selection, I have created a special website called eyewalladvisor.com. You will be find the link in the description below where you have an uh, automated IOL questionnaire, where you simply will answer seven questions and get recommendation of certain IOL type, which gives you a direction which you go with your ophthalmologist to discuss, first of all, if the direction available for you based on your medical history and is it any medical limitations. And once you confirm that there is no medical limitation and you really want to go with that type of IOL, then you can discuss with your surgeon particular models inside of the group. So it will narrow your choice and simplify your final discussion with your surgeon. And moreover, if you're a doctor, referring doctor or ophthalmologist uh, watching this video, I encourage you also to use this website to discuss uh, lenses options with your patient. You will see how it will save your time and simplify your work with in your daily life. And if you're a surgeon, I encourage you uh, to focus on vision acuity, visual acuity of the patient now. If you have records or simply try to ask your patient uh, what visual acuity patient had before in his early ages, because it could be a reference point to understand what could be expectation of a patient and how to deal with the future, uh, how to deal with the IOL selection and manage expectation of the patient after the surgery, including IOL calculation, including mix and match of different lenses, etc. So it looks like everything is clear and it's time to close the video, but not yet, because there are two more important points I have to emphasize and to have to explain you and to have to tell you about. The first one is what is EDOF or extended depth of focus or extended depth of field. It is important to know because um, about eight years ago, it was only one clear answer. EDOF is a new EDOF IOL from Johnson & Johnson. But now we have number of EDOF lenses in different EDOF technologies available. It's a short introduction to this topic for you to understand further your options and uh, be, um, let's say, more focused on your lens selection. And now let's talk a bit about EDOF. Is it technology or is it type of IOL? Few years ago, EDOF was only one IOL available and now we have different IOL types based on EDF technology. So EDOF is extended depth of focus, extended depth of field, and it's something which elongates focal point to focal line. And we have different types of IOL and based on different technologies which make this light line shorter or longer. And depending on this focal line length, we define the IOLs as a standard or advanced or enhanced monofocal or extended range of vision lenses. And both IOL types will refer to either standard group or presbyopia correcting group.
So I'm sure you now get a brief idea about EDUF technology and EDUF lenses. And if you would like to have more details, uh, more knowledge about that, I have recent video on my YouTube channel. So link will be also in the description below and here in the left, right, left, upper corner. Okay, let's move on. And the last but not least, but honestly, the most important part of IOLs it's the uh, two main characteristics. It is a defocus curve of particular model and a contrast sensitivity with different IOL types. I will briefly explain you how does it work and what impact on your vision quality will have the contrast sensitivity and the focus curve or behavior of different IOL optics implanted into, in, into your eye. Now let's come back to core IOL characteristics which describes visual equity and behavior of eye well in patient eyes. First one is the focus curve, which describes at which point from patient eyes, which distance from patient eyes, we get search and visual equity. Horizontal line is the di distance from patient eyes described in diopters and vertical line is visual equity. Simply find the cross point of distance versus visual equity and you'll understand the behavior of eye well. But it's important here to understand that eye well could be shifted due to the refractive error as the aim of refractive target based on searching eye well type and behavior. And that's why it means we shift the whole defocus curve closer or further from patient's eyes. And if you don't understand how the defocus curve shifted as the target refraction changed, you will have unhappy patient which cannot read or have, have a bad visual equity at far. Another important aspect which we often forget, it's a pupil size of the patient. When the, the changes of pupil size, even if eyewall is pupil size independent, quality of vision, especially at near and in far, could be changed and patient could complain. And if you don't consider the patient's visual equity at different lighting condition, you will discuss it. You will get an unhappy patient. And the latest important characteristic of eyewall is a contrast transmission, which reflects to contrast sensitivity of patient. The contrast sensitivity plays a vital role in quality of vision and quality of life of the patient. This parameter is well noticed by patients in dim light conditions and night conditions, and especially in elderly patients or patients with early glaucoma, retinal diseases, macular, etc. So, other words, when the eye is not in a perfect conditions. It is not about simple non-contrast picture, it's about details which a patient cannot define. I believe all of you know that patients with early cataract, when the contrast sensitivity is reduced, complains that it have a difficulty to define emotions of the people, or don't see a stains on the clothes. It also affects safety of driving. Please read the few carefully and do not underestimate the contrast sensitivity importance. So as you can see, it's quite complicated to select the proper IOL type and then the proper IOL model and how it will be implanted into your eye. And the best way is to discuss with your doctor. But honestly, we have a big problem in the entire industry, in all of the world, in the United States, in Europe, in Ukraine, in, in Turkey, whatever. Everywhere we have the same issue with uh, when the patient doesn't have enough time to talk with the surgeon. And surgeons or H, uh, eye care professionals sometimes either not fully aware about all the technologies, sometimes not able to explain well. I'm not blaming the surgeons. I'm not blaming patients who are not aware about the eye structure. It's simply, it is what it is. And uh, for that reason, I'm shooting my videos here. For that reason, I'm providing you with personalized uh, IOL consultation, which will prepare you for your further discussion with your surgeon. You will be more prepared. You will be understanding better options, pros, cons, limitations, and you will have more focused discussion with your surgeon. So if you need my help, feel free to contact me via my website, iwilladvisor.com, and I will try to help you to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Bye.